So Thwaites Glacier lies in an area called the Amundsen Sea embayment of West Antarctica and that, that area has been described by um, colleagues, I mean this is going back to the 1970s, as the weak underbelly of West Antarctica. Um, that area, if you, if you took the ice away um, instantaneously, the bedrock that the ice rests on is up to two and a half kilometres below sea level you know, two and a half thousand metres below sea level in places. And so um, that particular configuration where, so, that, so it's, called, it's what's called a marine ice sheet um, because the ice rests on bedrock below sea level. So part of the ice sheet is in contact with the ocean. This is the bit where uh, it's called the grounding line. That's the point where the ice becomes floating and starts to interact with the ocean. And if the ocean's warm, that underbelly, the, the underneath of the uh, ice sheet that's in contact with the ocean is, is going to start melting and um, the grounding line that I just described, that's going to move further inland and we, that there's, there's good evidence to suggest that that inland migration of the grounding line is a relatively unstable process and when it's resting on bedrock that's, that's sloping inland, getting deeper inland, that that's potentially unstable and so you could get quite a rapid migration of that grounding line. And Thwaites Glacier and Pine Island Glacier and several of the others in that, um, in that, that area called the Amundsen Sea Embayment, they, they're all resting on bedrock sloping inland and Thwaites is, is um, the biggest, one of the biggest, Pine Island and Thwaites are about the same size in terms of the, the amount of ice there they're discharging into the ocean. So they're really important for our understanding of um, what marine ice sheets might do and for sea level rise, potentially for future sea level rise.